All right, it looks like we are live. Welcome everybody, I'm Robin with Robin Ruth Design here with my second live class for uh, Summer Bloom and Winter Wreath. So welcome if you're just coming on. I'm kind of going solo today, so bear with me. Again, this is a new platform for me, but I'm getting more used to it. And I have Kristen in the background. She is going to be in the chat today. So um, make sure you look at the chat if you have questions or post your questions there as we go. And I will be looking um, at the chat as well. I see um, Christy from Tennessee or Tallahassee has joined us. Hello. So I'm just going to jump right in this morning um, and assume that people are getting on here. So um, I thought I'd um, share a few pictures. I've been doing a little traveling. Um, the first thing I'd like to share, this is the view this morning off my porch. So here at the ranch, you can see it's definitely hotter and more summer. Everything's drying up. You can see the cows down there. Um, in the valley, but the valley is not quite as green. This is kind of the uh, driest time of the year here. But um, I have been off traveling the last um, few weeks. Um, I have been uh, through a little uh, quilting tour through Montana and Idaho. Um, my first stop was in Missoula, and I spent um, a really fun day with some ladies from the Missoula Quilt Guild. We had a good time, and then I moved on up to Haver, Montana, way up north Montana, beautiful place. Um, taught a class up there um, at a shop called Barely Square. Um, had a great time there. And then finally, I ended up in Idaho Falls with another uh, great group of uh, ladies, the Snake River Valley Quilters Guild there. Um, and I um, taught a couple classes, a, a compass class and some sunflower classes. Um, so we had a great time. And then I was really lucky at the very end, um, I got to um, spend a week with my family in Yellowstone and we just had a fabulous time. We took um, our Airstream trailer and we stayed right there in the park and um, got to go all over. So anyway, I'm back. I'm regrouping and I'm really pleased to be with you um, here this morning. So we're going to get right into it now. So we are today on our Mariner's Compass Class 2. So um, a, a little bit of housekeeping. If you missed class one, so that was last month, um, it is available, the recording's available at thequiltshow.com for my live class that I did. So you can go there. Um, see what I have next here. Oh, yep, we did that. And so, yeah, and um, if you haven't got a kit yet, so... Um, Kristen let me know this. Um, there are just a few of the Summer Bloom kits left. So this is all available at thequiltshow.com. Um, Kristen will be posting a link. Um, the winter wreath kits are sold out, but the patterns and all the rulers, everything is still available there on their website. So make sure you check that out if you're still interested. Um, and... Um, also, the there is a forum on the Quilt Show if you go to their um, website up at the top. So um, you can post there down in the middle um, your progress or if you have questions. And I have been monitoring that. That has been a blast. Um, you guys are posting your practice blocks. It seems like everybody is getting along really well. Um, I've gotten some nice positive feedback about the tutorials and... Um, the pattern. So um, seems like we're off to a great start. So please keep posting your pictures. I love to see that. That's really great. Um, and then the last thing I want to say before I get into my actual demoing today is um, 
If you go to the Learn tab there on their website, on thequiltshow.com, at the top you click the Summer Bloom um, Winter Wreath, then it's going to take you to my page. So all the information, so my last live class, that's right there in the middle. And then down below are where the video tutorials are for making the whole block. And um, a new one has been posted um, for the block that I'm going to show you today for the second um, thing that I'm, we're going to do today. So um, that's where you go to find the video tutorials. So everything I'm going to show you today is in those video tutorials in very, um, in much more detail, but I am going to um, do some demoing today. I'm going to kind of walk you through the block um, because this is a variation and I just want to make sure everybody is on the same page. So yeah, if you've got any questions, please post them in the chat. I'm going to take just a really quick second and make sure that I don't have any questions that I'm missing. It looks like we're just seeing lots of hellos from all over. So, um, and it looks like the sound is good. Last time we had a little sound issue, but it looks like um, everybody is doing great. So, um, here's our Summer Bloom Winter Wreath project. So, everybody, we last month we worked on this center block, was with, which was just a Mariner's Compass block. So today we're going to work on this round sunflower block. So this is the larger um, compass block that's a variation um, in this quilt. So let me go ahead and switch my camera over so I can start to demo. All right, so in your pattern that you have, so we're now on step two, where it's um, making the Fat Robin 16.28 inch round sunflower block. So all the um, instructions are here. And I do tell you right off the get go that there's a little flipping back and forth in the book. And that's why I kind of wanted to walk you through this today. Um, but as you look at the pattern, I want to remind you, if you see words that are in colors, it's referring to the color of the chapter. So the companion compass blocks is in orange, so that means you should be in the orange chapter. And when I refer you back to the Mariner's compass, it's in green. So that's just to help you keep track of which chapter. So you're just gonna be flipping between um, those two chapters um, today. So we are making a round sunflower and it's going to tell you to go to page 12 in your book in the second chapter so in the round or in the orange chapter for round sunflowers and what i want to explain to you is this sunflower block that you see here in the middle of the page the construction is really the same for both of these blocks it's just how the finished raw block finishes so you can make it where it finishes raw, where you have all these points coming out around the outside. But we don't need those points. We want our block to finish more round. So we're going to use this other method that makes in the end our block to finish more round. And that's why we're looking at the round sunflower um, chapter. So that's the difference. The construction, though, if you look at them, they're really the same, right? We have 16 orange points, 16 inside points, and then our center. And if I lay this on top, it's the same block, okay? So the other thing I want to point out today, then, is the pressing, and I'm going to demo this as well. So we want to be really careful with our pressing again as you go so that it looks as pretty on the back as it does on the front and that it's going to lay nice and flat from the get-go for you when we add our centers. Okay, so let me just set these aside really quick and then I will come back and start to demo. So as you're looking at page 12, it's going to tell you basically in steps one to three that you're going to go back to the Mariner's Compass chapter for the first steps. Basically steps three through nine. And I do like to use sticky notes. So I've got a sticky note here um, at the bottom of the page, but I'm going to go back now to steps three through eight 
in my Mariner's Compass book. So that is basically just how we started your compass block. So you have done all of this. You've um, offset your strips, sewn them together, pressed them. Then we cut our units, right? And then we are going to go on to cut our background um, triangles off in this next step. So the one thing I do want to point out is that it's going to tell you to make 16. We need 16 units when we're done here. So I'll explain that as we go. So here is my strip set. I want to demo this this morning because I did have a question in the forum. Um, from someone who wanted to see how to cut these angled units if you don't have my angle ruler, okay? So here is my angle ruler. If you are using that, my big tip to you is always put it in the orientation that you see it in the book, right, to make the angles. What's great about my angle ruler is the angles are in the middle. So when you put this on here, you can make um, your cuts easily. What happens sometimes when you're using a different ruler, like I have an Omni grid here, which I use, you know, for other projects, but the angle is at the bottom of the ruler. So if I go to put the 60 degree angle on the seam line here to make my first cut, right, I can't make a full cut because the ruler is not covering the fabric. All I have to do, though, is flip that ruler around. All right, knocked my bottle over. And now I can make pretty much a full cut. It doesn't quite cover down here, um, but it's just like less than a quarter inch, so I can maintain that. So that will allow the ruler to work. So other straight edge rulers that have them on the end that can sometimes be an issue. But first, before you give up on that ruler, flip it around and see if you can make the cuts, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut a unit really quick just to kind of remind you. So we're gonna get that 60 degree angle on the seam line to the left of the um, salvages, and I'm gonna make that first cut. Then we're going to flip it around. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because now we're going to cut our units apart, but we need to cut them the same width as we cut the background strip. And the background strip is six and a quarter inches. So even if you're using my ruler, right, my ruler is only six inches wide. So how am I going to cut six and a quarter? Well, you can just take that regular straight edge that you have and I'm going to put the quarter inch down the raw edge push this over making sure that the 60 is lining up right we want to have accurate units just like we did for our compass and now I have six and a quarter inches so I'll go ahead and cut this unit try to missed one spot here. All right. Okay, so I've got my unit cut. So, and then we just go down the strip set again. I start by just putting my quarter inch down there, and then I slide this over, making sure that it's lining up. Now, if it's not lining up, right, we need to go back and retrim. But this is looking good, so I'll go ahead and cut a second unit. Okay, so let me set this aside. So you've got your eight units is what you're going to need. So you're going to get five units out of a strip set. So you'll cut five out of one of the strips and three out of the other. And I'm going to stop one second and just look at the chat here and make sure that we are doing okay. I don't see any questions. All right, so once we've got our unit, so we're following steps three through nine, so now I'm down at the bottom of um, page five. I've got my eight units. Then we are gonna go ahead and cut off those background triangles. And if you just remember, we're going to put our quarter inch line at the top of the seam and the edge of the ruler 
on the opposite point. So all of this is in the videos, step by step, but just to remind you. All right, so once we're done with this, these steps through step nine, you're gonna have eight of these and you're gonna have eight background triangles. So we're done here, I'm gonna go back to my round sunflower because I finished step nine and now I'm going to turn the page. So what's fun about this is we're gonna take those background triangles now and we're gonna sew them on, a, on the extra 0.1 strip that we have to create more units. So let me grab that. Because we need 16 of these in the end. So by cutting off the background triangles, adding them to our extra strips, it's going to give us eight more of these to get the 16 units that we're gonna need to move forward. All right, so to uh, get these sewn on here, we do have to do a little offsetting at the top. So to do the offsetting, you wanna look really close at your illustration. So remember we have this little tab when you pull off your tiny triangle. So I'm gonna recommend that when you find your offset, you're going to put the tab side down on the side that you're not sewing on. Then over here where it intersects, you want to rotate this around and make sure it's below where that intersection is. What you'll notice, and the reason I have you do it this particular way, is now I have straight of grain back to straight of grain. So I have the straight um, grain edge of the background triangle on the straight of grain strip. So once I've got that one started, then you're simply gonna add the other um, back, eight background triangles. So you'll get five on one strip and three on the other. You'll just sew your nice quarter inch seam. Okay, so let me just set that aside. Once you get those sewn on, you're going to press those triangles up and away. And remember when we're pressing, we're just pressing on the seam. We're not stretching, ironing out on those triangles to stretch them out. All right, let me just check the chat here again. Make sure, all right. I think we're good, so I will keep going here. So it's talking about the pressing here, pressing those up and away. And then we're going to cut these apart to make our extra eight units. So I'm going to put my 60 degree line right back down along the seam and up flush with where the triangle meets the strip. And I'm going to make that cut. All right, then I'll just slide down and that's how you're gonna cut all eight of these apart. Okay, so when you're done cutting them apart, you're now going to have eight of these units that have the little tab, right? Because those were the background triangles. And you're gonna have the eight units that you initially cut. From these, now we're on step seven, and it's going to, again, refer you back to the Mariner's Compass um, chapter to make the two cuts with your ruler. I'll demo that in a second, and then in the end, we'll just follow the instructions for making a sunflower. So, Mariner's Compass steps 10 and 11, that's just making the two cuts with our ruler. And I'll go ahead and demo um, on each of these, just so you can see it's not really, it's the same for each, but the units look just a titch different because of the way that they were constructed. And also, we're making a larger block now. So we're making a 28 inch block. So our left and low, we're gonna find our 28. <clears throat> it's a solid line, it goes on the seam line. <clears throat> 
and the dashed line is going to come down to the raw edge. Okay, so once I have those two lined up, I'm going to go ahead and make that first cut. Now the second cut, we're going to slide the ruler down. So it's the dashed line below the 28. The larger the block, the less you have to slide it. So I just have to go a little ways. Once I get the 28 there, I'm going to get the side of the kite on the seam and that center line on the point. Okay, so I've done it. That was for one of the original units. Let me cut one again with the uh, units we made with the extra background triangle. So I'm going to put the 28 on the seam line, dash line down on the raw edge, and this is going to be my first cut. Okay, second cut, high and right. I look on the right-hand side, I find my 28. Don't have to slide too far. Side of the kite on the seam. Dash line, this is on the center point. All right, and that is my cut. So now we have eight with the tab and eight without the tab of our units. So we're going to go back to our round sunflower construction. So we're right at, this, at step seven. And now it's going to tell us just to go ahead and proceed with the same steps as you would for a raw edge applique sunflower. So I'm going to flip now to page 10, so step six, and now we just have to follow these steps to make our sunflower. But in the end, our sunflower is not gonna have those points, it's going to be round. But the construction technique is exactly the same. So that's why I wanted to demo, especially these next steps so that you can see what it looks like. All right, let me just check the chat here. Looks like we're doing good. I don't see any new questions. Okay, so on step six here, this is just an offsetting step. So you're going to take your inside point two strip and you're going to take one of your units and you're going to this time put that unit right side up with it flush on the side that you're not sewing on. The side that you are sewing on, right, I'm just gonna mark that with my thumb, and then I'm just gonna flip the unit over, and that is where we're gonna start sewing our nice quarter inch seam. So that's just an offsetting step. In step seven, then it's gonna have you go ahead and sew all of those on, leaving them about a quarter inch apart, just using your nice, true quarter inch seam so you won't be able to get them all on one strip you'll sew as many as you can on one and then the rest of them you'll go ahead and sew on your second strip because this is a larger block than the 18 inch block than that i'm demoing or that i'm showing here in the book all right so once that gets sewn have this then you're going to go ahead and press those units up and away. So they were sewn on. Let me show you that, I guess, just to make so that we're on the same page. So these were just sewn on, right? I offset and I just sewed all of them on. Then I went to my pressing table and then I pressed them up and away. Again, just stopping, just getting your iron over the seam and making sure that seam is laying flat and going toward your units, okay? Now, we're working with larger pieces now. So you can see there's some play up here, right? With your units. Try to get them to kind of stand up like little soldiers, just as best as you can. So you don't have like a big wrinkle here you want them just to be as nice and tall as they can. So that's the pressing in step eight. 
And then in step nine is cutting them apart. So we're going to take that 60 degree angle again, and we're going to use the seam here to help us make sure when we cut, when we make the cut on the inside point two that we're making accurate angled cuts. If you make sure that 60 degree line goes down the seam as far as it can, also make sure your strip is nice and straight. I like to find a line on my cutting board and just make sure the strip is straight as well, okay? That'll help you be more accurate. And then you're just going to come in flush on the right hand side. Don't worry too much if your units are hanging over one way or the other of the ruler because we're only gonna cut the inside point two and we're relying on this seam line to keep this cut accurate. So I'll go ahead, make that cut, and then you would just go right down your strip set, making sure that's nice right on the seam line. I'll just go ahead and cut these four apart. Okay. One more here. And yeah, you just want to make sure that 60 degree line is nice and even down the seam. And I'll make that last cut. Okay, so now you will have eight of the units that were original and then the eight, right, that you made that have the little tabs. Next, we're going to make one more cut to make the units that we are going to need to um, finally sew together to make our block. So we're just going to turn these around as it shows in step 10 here. And you're going to take your 60 degree angle again and you're going to place it on the seam line between your background triangle and point one. And at this point, you really should be flush the whole way. I just like to use the 60 degree angle just to help you make sure everything's nice and true. But with the 60 on here, this triangle, right, it should be flush. And then you're just basically trimming it on the other side. So let me do one of these and then I'll do one of the originals. Okay, so the 60 is here. I'm nice up and flush, right? Okay, so at this point I would have my eight units original and my eight units made with the extra background triangles. We'll turn the page and now all we have to do is sew these units together. And what when we sew them together, we just need to match this seam. By matching the seam, it's going to get your um, round sunflower to become totally to size and totally round. Matching the seam takes a little practice if you haven't done this before, because when I go to um, pin these to sew, and I'll demo this a little um, more in detail, right? We're not butting up two seams, like we don't have a square where we're butting the seams. The, the seams do not butt up. So I will just kind of walk through this. As you look at the top of page 11, you'll see the units. And what I'm trying to show you here is the seams that we are matching. So I like to do a little sanity check here where I know I'm matching this seam to this seam. And then I'm gonna turn this over. And now you will see it looks like it does in the book. The only difference, right, we cut those background triangles off. So you just have to kind of imagine it without those background triangles, but that's what's going to allow our block to finish more round. So now as you look at the book, you can see this seam is matching this seam. So to get that to line up, I would place my quarter inch line down the raw edge of the unit that's facing down and stick my pin right into the stitching, okay? Then we know it's coming to this seam. 
So I'm going to put my quarter inch line down the raw edge here, and then I'm just going to stick this pin right into the seam next to the ruler. And now I know I've got it lined up, right? Seam to seam. You'll want to make sure you've got your seam or your pin nice and perpendicular, and then you're going to bring it up, okay? So, once you have them pinned, I would recommend for the first few just to sew four or five stitches right here, your true quarter inch seam, which you should be basically sewing right through that pin. And then opening it to see if you are flush. I can also, I took the pin out, I have it right up. I can pinch right up to that pin, right? And I can see if I have it pinned well, if that seam is going to come together. But then, like I said, I would recommend just sewing those four or five stitches, opening up, making sure you're happy. And if you're not, you just have to pull out those four or five stitches, repin it. You're going to have to find your own happy spot here because there are different um, variables, right, when you're sewing. So um, it will depend on how your feed dogs on your machine are feeding, um, your thread, um, the type of thread that you're using. You really have to be sewing right through that pin. So it just takes one or two times. You'll get the hang of it. But once you've got that figured out, then we are going to sew from the outside perimeter to the inside. And you're going to sew down basically through your pin. And if you have those four or five stitches right, don't take them out. Just sew right over them. And then pass the next seam three or four stitches. So I have a unit here that I've sewn. I'll try to hold it up. I sewed it in black, so I was hoping that you can see it. But just that true quarter inch, I basically sewed through the pin three or four stitches um, past the last seam. So let me just check the chat here. See if we're good. Somebody says the audio's not great. It might just be because I'm standing to the next, next to my computer. So sorry, I will try um, to speak up a little bit. Okay, so this is showing the sewing, right? So it's the same thing. It's just that we don't have those background triangles. And then now the pressing, and I'm going to go ahead and demo this pressing because this is really important for this block so that it will lay nice and flat when you're done. So I'll take my pin out, got my iron here, and I think it's warmed up. So yes, of course, we want to set our seam. And if you have it set up like it looks in the book, right, so your inside point two is facing to the right, then we're going to press up and away like we always do. So. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to put my iron over the seam, basically from the bottom of this point to the outside. I'm just going to hold my iron there for a second, make sure that seam is laying flat, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn it over so that seam's going. But here in the middle, what I want to do is I want to make sure that turns under consistently a quarter inch hold my iron here for a second so I can show you. All right, so you can see we've pressed the seam this way. So here in the middle, it wants to fold under. So that's what we want it to do, but you wanna make sure it stays consistent and you want it to be flat because once we sew all these together, right, we want this to be flat in the middle um, to be able to put our center on. So once you've got the twos together, right, you'll just keep sewing. The twos become fours, the fours become halves. You sew the two halves together and you will have your round sunflower block. So I have one that I made here. Let me just grab it. This out of the way. 
All right, so you're not going to be able to see the whole thing, but you're going to be able to see at least half of it here. But I've got it put together. I'm going to turn it over so that you can see what I'm talking about there in the center. I pressed all those units. So you press as you go, right, so that you have that quarter inch seam pressed under. That way, when your raw block is done, right, it's laying nice and flat here from the get-go. Now, there's a lot of play because this is a big block and it has a big center. So you will want to, you know, measure from finished point to finished point to kind of see if you're in the ballpark. But it's what is going to help it come to size and be round is your center. So don't worry about that too much. You just want to kind of make sure you're in the ballpark at this point, okay? So that is getting the raw block together. Then in your pattern, it's going to have you go ahead and make your faced circle center, and it's the same process that we used to make our face circle for the compass. So I've got one made here, let me grab it. So it's just bigger, but I used that um, non-fusible interfacing, right? I put that right sides together, the template. So the freezer paper template, it's larger, but I cut the freezer paper template, that's the finished size. So when I cut the fabric, I made sure I left a little around the outside. And then when I sewed, you sew right next to the freezer paper, right? And then you slit the back, turn it, and make sure when you're um, pressing, you press from the back so that interfacing doesn't show on the front. And then here's where you're gonna get your block to come to size and to really be nice and round. So we don't wanna just plop it on here and sew it. We want to make sure we're using some reference points to get it to line up. So let me grab my pressing board again here. I'm going to check the chat really quick and then I'll explain what I'm doing. Okay. All right. It looks like we're good. So what I like to do at this point is make some reference points in my center. So I'm going to just fold it in half and make a, a press. And then I'm going to take those two folds, put them together, and make another fold. So now I have north, south, east, west folds. Set this aside. Okay. Now with my block, I'm going to go ahead and place this north fold right at the base of point one. And I'm going to stick the pin in, okay? Then down at the bottom, the south fold goes on the opposite point, right? Then I'm going to get got west here. and east, and things aren't really lining up just well from the get-go, but you can see like as this is just laying here, some of the points it's a little over, some it's a little under, but what we're gonna do is make those points sit on the circle. Don't just let the center go where it wants. You're in charge, and you wanna make sure that it sits at the bottom of all those points. Give one more pin here. So once you get it pinned in all the way around, then you're just going to applique it down. And again, I just used a straight stitch um, to applique that in the middle of the block. Once your center is in, then I'm going to um, give instructions in the pattern to get this block once it's stable, right? So once you get it sewn in here, um, and then you're going to give it a final press, and then I did forget to tell you something. Once it's sewn in, then you're going to come around to the back, and you can go ahead and trim 
these pieces off. I show it in the video tutorial so you'll see it. So just, you know, you want to be below where it's sewn on there, about mm, three-eighths to a half an inch. You're going to trim all of that out. And then you can also trim out the extra, just the inner facing from behind. Then you'll give it a nice final press, and then you're going to prepare this block for applique. Now, you're going to need, for a compass block, we used the 12-inch circle, right, because it's a 12-inch block. But because freezer paper only comes 18 inches, um, I can only cut a half of a circle. So I use the template sheet, right, just to cut, trace my um, circle from the template sheet that comes with your book for a 28 inch. So now it's 14 by 28. And then basically you're going to do the same thing, but just half of the block at a time or you can make two halves if you like and put them together for this. But I think it's best just to do half at a time. You're gonna place the edge of the freezer paper so that you're at the stitching X or right above it, right? On all your stitching X's, make sure that you've got it nice and even. If you've got to pull or push a little bit, you know, get your block to um, come right to where it needs to be. You'll trim that little bit of riffraff, right? And then you're just going to come in and press that edge around your freezer paper. Take the freezer paper out, give it a pin, all right? So then this block would be ready um, for applique. So that's really all that there is in step two. In the videos, I'm going to ask you to do one more small step. So if you go to page four, um, or step four, page 10 in your pattern, I um, ask you to go ahead and do step B, which is then taking your uh, original compass block, grab mine, so here's the raw block, so this has been sewn, then you're going to take this block and you're going to center it in the middle of this block, make sure you're lining your points up, get everything lined up as best you can so that it's nice and even all the way around. You'll take the pins out and stick them right back in, right? And then you're going to sew this into the middle of your block. Once it's sewn in, then you'll turn your block over and you can trim out the excess fabric of the center that is behind the compass. We're just removing some bulk from behind so that um, you don't get any like weird wrinkles or it just is not adding um, weight to your quilt. So this month, that's the job. It's making this round sunflower block, putting a center in, preparing it for applique, and then go ahead and adding your original compass block in the middle. And then you're gonna, we'll have the center medallion part of our quilt made. And then next month, we are going to make the Dresden band and add the petals. Um, and then this medallion is simply going to applique on top of that. And we'll talk also um, about the finishing for the quilt and also for the tree skirt. But um, so, I hope you guys will have fun making this variation um, of a compass block. Um, I think this is a fun block to make. Um, let me just check the chat here now and see if we've got any questions. Uh, I think, all right. Okay, it doesn't look like I have any questions. I'm wondering if maybe Kristen could come on for a second or give me a message to see if there's anything else. I know um, there will be a recording of this class that's going to be available um, later today on thequiltshow.com. Kristen will be posting a link for that. Um, and then that final class will be next month. It'll be on Tuesday, September 5th. So I'll be um, demoing the technique to make those Dresden bands and the petals. So um, with that, let me just check the chat once more. 
looks like people are finding the um, videos to be helpful. I love that. Yeah, so I think we're good. So with that, I think I will go wait just a minute here. I still don't see Kristen um, putting anything in the chat, but... think we're okay. All right. Well, it's been great spending time with you guys today. Um, I look forward to seeing you next month. Please post pictures. I love to see your progress. So hopefully you guys will be posting um, pictures of that center medallion um, in the next week. So um, we'll see you guys next month. Thank you.